Spider-Man has always been something of an odd duck within the Marvel Universe, a statement that Captain America himself has often used to describe the Masked Vigilante. But good old Steve Rogers has only ever seen his universe as Spider-Man. I wonder what he would say if he saw some of these wacky, dark, and just flat-out strange versions of the Web Slinger. Lucky for him, that's exactly what we're taking a look at today. The Top 10 Strangest Spider-People Across the Marvel Multiverse Coming in at the number 10 spot, we have the Japanese Spider-Man and his trusty partner, Leo Pardon. Starting with what might be the most well-known Spider-Man on this list, or at least I hope he is, we have the Emissary of Hell himself, Spider-Man or Spider-Man. Hailing from the live-action 1978 Japanese Spider-Man TV show, this version of Spidey is as bizarre as he is hilarious. On top of this, he's a package deal. This version of the famed webhead is always just a quick call away from his trusty and infamous mecha, Leo Pardon. Alright, so we have a live-action 70s Japanese Spider-Man with a giant mech suit similar to the Power Rangers. How could this get any weirder? Well, funny enough, this version of Spider-Man was actually brought over into the comic book world. Takuya Yamashiro is the official Spider-Man of Earth 51778, and unlike most versions of this character, he gained his powers in an incident that is truly out of this world. Instead of the usual radioactive spider bite, Takuya gained his powers from an alien. Yeah, you heard that right, more specifically an alien from Planet Spider. Similar to the origins of DC's Hal Jordan, Takuya gained his powers when the alien Garia telepathically summoned him to his crash site and passed his abilities on to him. Takuya gained both Garia's spider bracelet along with the powers of his people, and with this, Takuya became Spider-Man and the owner of the legendary mech Leopardon. Oh, and to make things even weirder, after giving Takuya his powers, Garia transforms into a spider himself and helps Takuya telepathically before eventually meeting his spidery death. Takuya does eventually show up in the Western comics alongside the powerhouse Leo Pardon, and his two single greatest appearances are in the multiverse events Spider-Verse and Spider-Geddon. The first time we ever see him grace Western comics is in the Dan Slott's 2014 Amazing Spider-Man run, where the man with a burning passion shows up to save the day right as his fellow Spider-People are getting murdered by the Inheritors. Our main universe, Spidey, introduces this new variant as Takuya Yamashiro, the Spider-Man of Earth 51778, before declaring that he also comes equipped with a giant robot. Sadly, Leopardon is dismantled by the enemy almost as quickly as he arrived. However, Takuya claims Leopardon is invincible and makes a return later on in the fight after being patched up by his fellow spiders. All in all, this version of Spidey may be wacky and strange, but that just makes him all the more unique. And with rumors that he might be included in the 2023s across the Spider-Verse, you might not have to wait long to see his uniqueness on the big screen. But before we move on to our next entry, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss an upload and smash that like button for more Plot Armor comics. Now I know you might have been expecting another animal Spider-Man character on this list, one that may have been featured in a very popular movie in the last couple of years, but I promise you that our number 9 Spider-Cat is just as interesting, if not more than that goofball Spider-Ham. Spider-Cat is, well, exactly what it sounds like, a cat with the powers of Spider-Man. And no, before anyone asks, this is not the cat from the PlayStation 4 games. This feline can pretty much do anything our Spidey can, from swinging building to building via webbing to sticking to walls. Spider-Cat can do it all. He even has his own Spider-Man costume and mask. Believe it or not, Spider-Cat's first appearance was actually in the main 616 continuity, starting as a tired house cat. It soon gains powers in the Spider Island story arc. A seven-issue long story where pretty much everyone, including animals that were within New York City at the time, gained spider powers for a little while before Spidey put an end to it. There is, however, a universe where Spider-Cat kept his powers, Earth-999. Sadly, this multiversal Spider-Man met his end when the Inheritors, a family of multiverse hopping life force vampires, caught him alongside many Spider-People during the Spider-Verse event. Yes, you heard that right, multiversal vampires. They exist, they are powerful, and they are cool as hell. Not only that, but they are also very sadistic, going as far as to mock the captured spider cat before draining away his life force. Popping in at number 8, we have a strange but extra cute entry on this list, Tsum Tsum Spider-Man. 
If the name Tsum itself doesn't bring in waves of nostalgia already, let me remind you what these little things are. Tsum Tsum was a real life product created by Disney that blew up around 2016 till the end of 2017. Basically, these little things were stackable plushies with the likeness of popular Disney characters. There were Princess Tsum Tsum, Star Wars, Marvel, and many, many more. It wasn't too long until these cute, squishable creatures made their way into the comic world, thus presenting the world with a Spider-Man Tsum Tsum. Obviously, to be featured in comics, the writers behind the Tsum Tsum comic line had to come up with a reason for the creatures to show up, let alone exist. And so, the Tsum Tsum were labeled as aliens in the Marvel Universe, more specifically aliens to be brought to the collector for storage and display. Of course, this doesn't end up happening, and instead the Tsum Tsum end up on Earth. After crash landing and being rescued by a young trio, the Tsum Tsum begin to mimic their favorite superheroes and eventually their favorite supervillains, adopting both their likeness and superpowers. Now just imagine being a New Yorker and looking outside your window only to see a cylinder plushie of Spidey swinging by your window. Funnily enough, this version of Spider-Man also takes place in the main Marvel Universe, Earth-616. One day there's a cat Spider-Man and next there's a plushy Spidey. The life of a Marvel Universe civilian must be very confusing. Baking at number 7, we have what might be the wackiest Spider-Man on this list. I present to you Golden Sponge Cake Spider-Man. This variant of the Web Slinger was created thanks to a deal between Marvel and the Hostess brand back in the 80s. With this deal, the Hostess brand was given ad space within Marvel Comics where they would have heroes defeat villains using their copyrighted products. This is not a joke. There were literal copyright symbols in the character's speech bubbles whenever they announced a product's name. Seeing how this is a Hostess brand, ads eventually got their own Earth coordinates, making the Hostess brand Spidey native to Earth 51914. If you think that's where all the fun ends, just wait till you get this. Hostess brand Spider-Man, or as he was later renamed Golden Sponge Cake Spider-Man, to avoid copyrights, doesn't use violence on any of those within his unique rogues gallery. Instead, he lures them and traps them with the sweet treats that the Hostess brand has to offer. One of my personal favorites from this series of ads is when Peter goes up against the Demolition Derby, a villain made specifically for this ad and this ad alone. With Peter's usual webbing being too weak to hold the incredibly strong Demolition Derby, he instead opts to give the villain some hostess Twinkies cake to distract him long enough for the cops to come and subdue him. Sadly, this wonderfully wacky version of the beloved character met his end similarly to Spider-Cat when an inheritor came to his earth and ate his life force away. Even as he was being attacked, this version of the webhead offered his assailant some Twinkies. Aw, that was sweet of him. What a nice guy spider uh, cake thing. As we know in the vast Marvel multiverse, anyone of any race or age can wear a mask and be Spider-Man, including Aunt May and Uncle Ben. That's right, swinging in at number 6, we have a package deal going on with Spider-Ma'am and Spider-Man. Starting with Spider-Ma'am, this Aunt May version of the Web Slinger might just have the best universe compared to any other spider. Her version of the character never faces any actual tragedy like every other iteration. Instead, she lives a relaxed life as a spider-powered individual fighting crime and happily living with her young nephew and loving husband. In Spider-Man's home universe of Earth-3123, her nephew Peter forgot his lunch at home during the faithful trip to Oscorp. And with Aunt May being the loving aunt she is, she rushes over to the building to give it to him. Due to this, May is the one who actually gets bitten instead of Peter, thus creating the loving Spider-Ma'am. Spider-Ma'am does eventually show up again in 2015's Spider-Verse, just like many other popular Spider-Man variants. Luckily, Spider-Ma'am is one of the spiders that survived the whole event. As such, she is able to go back home to her loving family, where she eventually reveals to her husband and nephew that she is Spider-Ma'am. Of course, her family accepts her and even begins to help with Spider-Ma'am's crime fighting. Peter develops web shooters for her and Ben runs reconnaissance and mission support. It's the ultimate crime fighting family. On that happy note, let's move on to Uncle Ben's version of Spider-Man and the universe he resides in. A universe that is basically the polar opposite of Spider-Man's adoring one. Similar to the Aunt May variant, Uncle Ben gets his powers in this universe when he attends a science demonstration with his nephew. And of course, as Ben says himself, with great power comes great responsibility. With this, the Spider-Man of Earth 3145 is born. 
Ben follows his own influential quote, using his powers to help people for years. However, his career as Spider-Man is cut short when his nemesis Norman Osborn, known as the Emerald Elf in this universe, crosses the line after discovering Spider-Man's true identity. Armed with this information, he kills Ben's wife and nephew. Unable to continue Spidey activities after this loss, Ben puts the suit down for good and retires. If you think that's bad, just wait, Ben's story gets even worse. After retiring, Ben is approached by Ezekiel Sims, who informs him about the Inheritors and how they'll eventually come to kill him. In order to prevent this, Ezekiel offers that Ben live out the rest of his days in a secret bunker that will keep him hidden from these villains. With nothing else going for him, Ben accepts his offer. Years later, while Ben was still hiding away, the villain Doc Ock held the world hostage with a nuclear ransom. Otto was set to receive everything he wanted in his ransom, however, it seemed that he miscalculated somewhere and his nuclear bomb went off anyway. Just like that, Otto's bomb killed everything, contaminating the planet with radiation and leaving it as an uninhabitable nuclear wasteland. The only survivor left was Ben Parker, who was safe inside his bunker. Ben views this as one of the many regrets in his life and still wonders could he have stopped Otto. Ben thankfully does turn his life around within the pages of the Spider-Verse event, after getting a much needed rude awakening from Superior Spider-Man. Suiting up one last time, he prepares to fight in the final battle against the Inheritors and manages to come out victorious alongside his fellow Spiders. With the Inheritors gone, Ben Parker is finally able to get his relaxing happily ever after when he returns to Earth-982 to live with his family. Albeit it's an alternate reality family, but a family nonetheless. With his new life, Ben Parker gets to do something no other Uncle Ben has ever done. He lives life as a grandfather. See y'all, the multiverse doesn't always have to be sad and filled with death, sometimes it can be happy. Emphasis on sometimes. Suiting up at number 5, we have what might be my favorite version of the Spider-Man to exist ever, Arachnite. This guy is not only strange, but just straight up awesome and I can't wait to tell you why. Arachnite exists thanks to a certain someone taking up the family business and collecting infinity stones. <clears throat> Kimura. <clears throat> Once all the stones had been collected, she did something very similar to that of her father, but at the same time very different. Instead of erasing half of all life in the universe, Gamora instead folds the universe in half, creating what is known as Warp World. In this Warp World, every hero, villain, and even everyday civilians have been merged with one another and it makes for some amazing fusions. But the character we're focusing on today is Arknight, a fusion of Spider-Man and, you guessed it, Moon Knight. Although this version of the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man wasn't around for too long, he definitely left an impression with his stunning suit and unique backstory. You see, in this version of Peter's infamous story, he, his aunt, and his uncle all attended the American Museum of Natural History instead of a science exhibition. On their way home from the event, Peter convinced his aunt and uncle to walk home cutting through Central Park instead of taking a taxi. Unfortunately, while the trio took this walk, they were suddenly attacked by the Goblin by Night, an amalgam of the Green Goblin and Werewolf by Night. That night, both May and Ben died, and it seemed Peter was about to as well. But as he lay there, slowly bleeding out, he was bitten by a strange mystical spider. Thus, Peter's life was saved while he also gained the usual Spider-Man powers. However, in this iteration of the character, his powers came with one side effect. His mind was shattered into four new personalities. Fifteen years later, Peter is now the owner of Parker Industries and fights crime by night as the vigilante Arachnite. He has his closest friend Harry Russell at his side for both his professional job and his nighttime activities. As an adult, Peter has also decided to listen to his other alters and regularly allows them to control his body. All four personalities function peacefully and in fact nearly every alter has a portion of Peter's life that they control. The first of these alters is the arachnid, a more lighthearted and comedic personality and the one that is usually in control during Peter's time as Arknight. Alternatively, when the arachnid isn't in control, the knight takes over. This alternate is darker and much more aggressive, even using weapons when he fights and finishes off his enemies while he's in control. Interestingly, the knight serves as Peter's fight or flight response, taking over in moments of danger. The third alter takes care of Peter's daytime responsibility and is known as CEO Parker. Aside from this, CEO Parker is usually the voice of reason among the four. Finally, the last of the alters is Science Parker. This personality shares the daytime hours with CEO Parker and only has one priority, science. He even has his own enormous lab funded by his CEO alter. Sadly, we never do get to see this spider outside of his own universe or even outside of the Infinity Wars event. 
But who knows, maybe one day he'll pop up somewhere, and hopefully he'll still be sporting that amazing suit. Swinging in at the number 4 spot, we have what might be the strangest overall universe on this list, Earth-13584. Just taking a brief glance at this universe will show that something is very wrong. New York has been split up into territories by some of Earth's most recognizable heroes and is essentially a turf war. Tony has lost his mind, The Thing is now the leader of Subterranea, and pretty much half of the heroes are dead. Meanwhile, Spidey is going through some serious side effects from his radioactive spider bite, now sporting spider-like eyes, organic webbing, and blue skin. It also seems he's just completely stopped talking to everyone and anything, instead choosing to communicate with body language in a series of hisses and other animal-like noises. If you're anything like me, you're probably wondering what the hell happened to this universe. To put it simply, AIM happened. AIM, the advanced idea mechanics, created this pocket reality that is Earth-13584 to experiment and steal technology from some of the greatest minds. They also made various changes to the history of this world, bringing it to its current state. Now, we never do find out what changes made New York become the mess that it is, but whatever happened, Spidey came prepared. Not only did he collect a group of allies right as the fighting began, but he also made sure to cover the entirety of Hell's Kitchen with his new organic webbing, creating a safe place and clear boundaries when it comes to his new territory. Aside from his strange new abilities and mutation, we don't know much about this universe's Spider-Man, and thankfully we won't ever learn more about this nightmare, seeing as how his entire universe was folded in on itself and reset. As we break into our top 3 strangest spider people, I'd like to introduce you to a version of the webhead that I doubt many of you have ever seen. At number 3, we have the Web Slinger. This version of the character comes from Marvel's 2016 3 issue miniseries Avatars Covenant of the Shield. In what is essentially an olden day fantasy retelling of the Marvel Universe, we see a Spider Man who is more spider than man. In Len Kaminsky's retelling of Peter's iconic story, we see a young human boy who was gifted the powers of a spider from this universe's Madame Web, known as Widow of the Web. She not only gifts Peter his powers, but also trains him on how to use them. With his training done, the Widow puts one condition on Peter's use of his powers, and that is to never use them for his own gain, which Peter agrees to. However, one day, in order to save his uncle Ben's life, Peter breaks this condition and rushes in, using his powers to stop what would be his uncle's killer. Seeing this as a breach of her condition, the widow curses Peter, transforming him into a monstrous spider. Now forever stuck in his spidery form, Peter still uses his powers to protect those in his village, even as they call him a monster. This version of Spider-Man's story is perhaps even more tragic than the original. Even when he tries to save his uncle, he gets the short end of the stick. Poor Peter. So far, we've seen multiple spider people who are more spider than human. We've even seen a cat. But you know what we haven't seen yet? A Spider-Man that's made of spiders. That's right, crawling in at the number two spot, it's Spider's Man. In what might just be the most tragic Spider-Man origin story ever, we have Earth 11580's Peter Parker. Like most origin stories, this one begins with Peter attending a science exhibition with Gwen Stacy. This time around, Peter's been invited to tour the brand new technology and experiments going down at Horizon Labs. One of the experiments Peter gets to observe is a colony of radioactive spiders. While trying to get a better look at the exhibit, Peter leans too far in and ends up falling into the tank. And from this, yet another superhuman is created by a slip and fall accident. Except Peter doesn't come out fully human or even any part human. Instead, Peter's human body is completely devoured and ripped apart by the colony, not even leaving behind a trace of the young boy. However, while feeding on their dinner, it seems that the colony ended up absorbing pieces of Peter's consciousness as well. Due to this, what comes out of the tank isn't Peter, but instead thousands of radioactive spiders trying to emulate the person they had eaten. Dressing up in costume, the colony calls itself Spider's Man and begins crime fighting. Understandably, anyone would feel bad for this version of the classic web slinger, but you need to know something first. Over time, this particular version of Peter developed a taste for human flesh, even going as far as to eating a dead body and stating that it tasted like bacon, so do what you will with that information. With all these strange, wacky, and dark versions of Spider-Man, you may be wondering what could possibly take the number one spot. Well, to that, I say Earth-73640, home of Darkhold Spider-Man. 
You see, in this universe, something very strange has been happening. Without any explanation, this universe's world has simply begun to crumble. Bodies, buildings, and even liquids are falling apart in something reminiscent of the way the universe collapsed in the animated series What If. Luckily, not everyone is affected by this crumbling, and there are still superheroes that can save the day like Spider-Man, who runs around the city attempting to web everything and keep everything together. Unfortunately, Peter's webbing is a temporary solution at best and can only last for about three hours or so, meaning that he constantly has to go around to reinforce his webbing while making more. All this while he tries to rush home to his wife Gwen Stacy in time for their anniversary. As Peter is wrapping up his run for the day, Reed Richards calls him over to the lab and shows him how he used a special enzyme to turn one of his fingers into a sort of web replacement. Reed goes on to tell Peter that there are others with his elasticity that could find Finally save the city, one of these people being the recently spotted Venom. However, after a brief run-in with Venom, Peter sees the true state of Eddie Brock and realizes Reed's plan won't work. You see, Eddie, the symbiote's host, had fallen victim to the unraveling effects of this world. Venom tried keeping him fresh, but unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. Eddie is now dead, and without any other choice, a heavy-hearted Peter reluctantly attempts to offer himself up as a new host. Venom seems to think about it before finally rejecting Peter's offer and seemingly dying alongside Eddie. After watching his old nemesis fall apart in front of him, Peter is understandably shaken. The hero stands there for a while, before realizing that he has somewhere to be and rushes home to his wife. When Peter finally gets home, he isn't greeted by his loving wife, instead he sees nothing but her skeleton. It's then that Peter realizes he's been living his life on loop. Gwen has been dead for months now, and he's just been repeating the same actions from the day the unraveling began, the last day Gwen was alive, the last time they were happy. With this realization, Peter is finally broken. Months of swinging around and trying to repair everything have finally gotten to him, and now he's about to do the unthinkable. Peter returns to Reed, and without saying a word, just as Reed begins to apologize to Peter, the webhead launches at Reed, injecting him with the enzyme he had just shown him earlier. From there, Peter does the unthinkable and uses Reed's elastic body as his own webbing, spreading him throughout the city to prevent the unraveling. Reed's entire body is stretched out, cut up and being used to hold up entire skyscrapers. Worst of all, Reed is fully conscious conscious and can feel all the pain from being stretched this thin. However, when he tries to cry out to Peter, the now further broken Peter tells him with a grin that this is his responsibility to the city. And that horribly dark ending is why this version of Peter is the strangest version of Spidey to exist, using his own friend and mentor as webbing. It really shows how damaged this universe of Spider-Man is. Of course, in an infinite multiverse full of spider people, there are sure to be even stranger variants somewhere out there. So tell us, do you have any variants? you think belong on the list? Let us know in the comments below. As always, we here at Plot Armor Comics love hearing your thoughts and opinions almost as much as we love presenting these stories to you. Well, that does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Morse Code and we'll catch you in the next video.